Good afternoon, everybody. This is Emma Flynn, psychologist here. Um, it's Saturday afternoon in Australia, and I was reflecting all week um, what might be the most helpful topic to most people. And I've come up with the idea of sleep, which to most of you who are very alert, um, will have spotted that in the background, specifically sleep hygiene. Um, for those of you who are probably asking now at the moment, um, what is it about sleep hygiene and what's happening at the moment or sleep um, that's relevant? I would say, good question. <laughs> and in fact, it is very, very relevant. Um, so for people at the moment who may be struggling with sleep, I want to reassure you that that is a really normal reaction um, to stress. So what happens um, in our limbic system, um, there's a, a component called the amygdala. Now the limbic system um, basically controls emotion, memories and arousal. And when we are experiencing stress, um, we tend to go into fight or flight. So we have a heightened level of stress response and reactions, um, particularly relevant um, to what's happening at the moment. Coronavirus is one type of stress. Um, so what happens in the amygdala, um, it triggers the release of any sort of um, stress hormones such as um, adrenaline or cortisol um, and we end up feeling more alert, which we actually want the opposite in terms of sleep. Um, it will also decrease our levels of serotonin, which is designed to make us feel more tired. Um, and again, this will affect either how we fall asleep or how well we remain asleep or both. So for anybody that isn't actually experiencing problems with sleep at the moment, I would still say, please watch this video because you will fall into the basket of prevention rather than intervention. And anybody um, who is experiencing challenges with sleep, again, that is normal. But what I'm sharing with you today is what you can actually do um, to counteract that and improve your quality of sleep. And for those of you that are not experiencing problems, as I said, this will be preventative and it will just make you more conscious of keeping all of these things in check. So basically what I'm going to share with you is 15 components that are very key in terms of having um, good quality sleep. Um, so you will notice there's a list in the background that is there. I'll try and bring that closer at the end um, if I don't run out of time because I am trying to keep this video to under um, 10 minutes or thereabouts um, so that I can actually post that um, on LinkedIn. Um, so again, if we look at get regular, so get regular means having regular sleep. Um, it's one of the best ways that we can actually can train our bodies um, to have um, good quality and maintain good quality sleep. So essentially what that means, it means um, going to bed the same time um, every day, including weekends, and um, also getting up at the same time thereabouts every day, including weekends. So for anybody that's working at home at the moment, you may be noticing that that's starting to gradually um, change and you're having re irregular um, get up and go to sleep times. I would emphasize that it's really, really important that these maintain regularity. Um, because if with any of the things that I've suggested today, you're flexible um, with the things that I'm recommending, you will find that your sleep will be impacted, but also you will find that adjusting back to normal work life routine, when we do all start get, to get back to normal and we can work in our usual office spaces or workspaces, you will find it more of a challenge. So again, this will be preventative in terms of also and helping you adjust better um, to normality again, um, which hopefully isn't too far in the distant future. So sleep when sleepy. So basically it's stating the obvious, sleep when sleepy. So um, how many of us fall into the trap of going to sleep when um, we're not really tired and we'll end up searching on the phone? So basically looking for phys physiological signs, I should say, such as heavy eyes, um, excessive yawning, will be all indicators that we're ready to sleep. Um, get up and try again. So if you find um, that you're having difficulty sleeping or um, you've woken up during the night um, you know, and you haven't fallen asleep after about 20 minutes, get up and do something that's either calming or boring. So have a book that you can read that's calming or it's boring. Or for some people that might be um, folding clothes, for example. Fourthly and fifthly, I'll do those together. So any substances um, such as alcohol, caffeine or nicotine, um, they actually make us more alert. 
Um, so basically, the guideline would be not to have any of these substances um, for at least um, um, not for at least uh, four to six hours before we actually go to bed. Um, and we, we'll talk later about some alternatives to that as well. Um, avoiding alcohol is really important at the moment because I can see that that can become a, um, I guess, a, a crutch for most people or a self-medicating um, mechanism. And it might seem like you're getting better sleep, but I can guarantee you, you will be getting broken sleep and not very good quality sleep. So again, avoiding any of those substances um, that we tend to access to self-medicate. Um, so sixth bed is for sleeping. Again, stating the obvious, but with um, the coronavirus at the moment, a lot of us are working at home and um, given social um, or physical um, distancing guidelines. So if we have um, unfortunately got limited space or you know, trying to be conscious of privacy and other people are working in other parts of the house, we may have fallen into the trap of working in our bedroom. Our brain works by correlating bed to work in that case so you're changing that correlation so anybody that has fallen into that, that trap or is starting to fall into that trap i would strongly recommend find an alternative space and um, for you to work outside so the bed is just for sleeping um, also uh, we talk about no naps so again the um I guess risk would be working from home is that again we think we have flexibility to do what we want when we want and I would say that anybody that is starting to fall into the trap of getting up later or having naps during the day I would say please 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 work on stopping that sooner rather than later if you do have to have a nap try and keep it under half an hour and before three o'clock and um, but my best advice would be not to have any naps at all and to keep that regular um, get up and go to bed time across your whole week, including weekdays and, and weekends. Uh, sleep rituals. So um, sleep rituals are basically what we do to help calm down and get ready for bed and create that correlation um, in our brain and our body that it's time for bed. Um, so some things to think about if you don't already do these or you've fallen out of doing these things would be um, to do some breathing exercises before bed, to find a meditation that you like listening to, um, to do some stretches, um, to sit calmly with a caffeine-free um, tea, for example. Um, bath time. So we may not all be lucky enough to have a bath, but for those of us that are, um, having a hot bath is really, really helpful and can help us have better quality sleep. So it's that, that I guess, um, rise in temperature from a hot bath and then the drop off in temperature and um, that's really helpful in terms of helping us um, getting ready for sleep. So it's the, it's, I guess the um, sleepiness is associated with the drop off in body temperature. If, if you don't have a bath or you're not able to have a bath because you're water conscious, that's completely OK. An alternative might be a hot shower as well. Um, so no clock watching, number 10. Um, so basically, if you do find that you're um, conscious of, oh, I haven't fallen asleep or I'm awake for such a long time or I've only been awake for X amount of minutes, um, please stop doing that. Clock watching will basically um, reinforce negative thoughts and patterns about not sleeping. So essentially no clock watching. Um, 11. Sleep diaries. So I'm going to share with you that in, at, at the end. I guess I'll share a link. I'll put it in um, the post as well with this video. Um, a sleep uh, diary is a very, very good way of monitoring and tracking um, change and reinforcing what's actually working for you. Um, lastly is exercise. Sorry, not lastly. I should say twelfth <laughs> um, is exercise. So looking at exercise. So if we can do exercise during the day, and um, making sure it's nothing strenuous, and um, for at least four hours before bedtime, is a great way of tiring out our body physically and mentally. Um, so essentially trying to do that throughout our day. You mightn't do that all at once, and um, you might break that up um, so that it's more manageable. Eat right, so a healthy diet is really important. Um, having the right space and keep to a daytime uh, routine, so keeping the same routine. Thank you for watching this video. I will paste the sleep diary and um, some other information in there. And um, as I said, I would encourage you to pick, um, say three that are most important for you and focus on changing those. 
Um, as always, be kind.